this is the video to help you fill out the P1 logbook for mechanical engineering technology. This is the P1 logbook. Uh, in order to complete the logbook, there are things that you need to fill in. First of all, the front page. You need to fill in your details in the top section here. Your employer's details in this middle section here. There are some important instructions that you need to read at the bottom of this page. Please make sure that you do so. This is the first page. It's got all the introductory details, my contact information at the bottom. Please note all correspondence is by email, not by phone calls. This is the index page to guide you through the logbook. This is page four. It is important that you fill in this page four as I need this information in order to schedule my company visits while you're doing your practical training. Page four requires you to fill in all your technical details up, up at the top here. The start date and end date of your P1 is very important. The name of the company and the physical address where you're doing the training is very important. Please make sure that you do not give me a PO box number. I cannot find you with that information. The details of your supervisor, mentor or training officer are required at the bottom here. Each company will have a different setup. Please find out who these people are and put their details in for me. You have two weeks in which to scan, email this information back to me. It's vital that I get this as quickly as possible. These are the procedures for work integrated learning at the University of Johannesburg. This information has been given to you in class and it is on the notice board. Please make sure that you're familiar and that you read this information. Work integrated learning works according to a series of guidelines. On page six, you'll find guidelines for the student. On page seven, you'll find guidelines for the employer. Please make sure that you read them and you let your employer read them as well. Of, in, of importance, through, through paragraph from the top on page seven, you'll find a statement that says employer is required to offer a minimum of 80% of the requirements. Please make sure that you're aware of this and you make your employer aware of it too. The minimum requirements for P1 are described in three different places in three different ways in this logbook. Page 8 and page 9 covers those minimum requirements. Please make sure that you familiarize with yourself with them and you let your employer read them as well. The documentation, all the documentation that I need from you for P1 is in this logbook. There will be training reports, summary data sheet, and executive summary that you need to fill out. I will show you where they are and I will show you what you need to do. Page 11 is the second place where the requirements are described. This is an itemized list of activities that you need to cover. The time required for activities is highlighted here on the right hand side, but this is guideline only. The total time period is 24 weeks and that is not negotiable. The activities can be covered in any order. The 80% that you need to cover of the requirements applies to this listing here. Page 12 and page 13 are the third place where the requirements are described in this logbook. So really there should be no reason for any employer or any student to say they do not know what they have to do for P1. Page 14 is the first of your training report pages. You will see that in the logbook there are many, many page uh, uh, training report pages. Uh, the way that you fill out the training reports is as follows. In the first column, you write a short summarized description of the activity that you have just completed. The next column is the date of completion, so you will fill that in there. The next column is the student's signature, so you will sign next to the date of completion that you have filled in. You will then hand this to your supervisor 
who will read the description and make a judgment whether he finds you competent or not. They will then sign in the supervisor mentor signature column and then give you the evaluation. You will then fill in the next activity that you have completed and so on and so on and so on. It's important that you write short summarized descriptions, not one line descriptions and not multi-page descriptions. It's important that you have dates and signatures on every single page. If you would like to fill in more detail regarding the activity that you have uh, uh, summarized here, you're welcome to use this blank page. Some students use this to fill out additional detail. At the bottom of every training report page, it's important that your supervisor, mentor or training officer writes comments about what is filled in on that page and signs it off. It is important that every training report page has comments and a signature at the bottom of every page. You will see that there are many training report pages because there's a lot of training that you're going to cover in 24 weeks and there's a lot of training that you have to describe. Some of the common questions that get asked regarding these training reports are as follows. Do I have to fill in a training report for every day that I do training? The answer it depends. If it's an activity that lasts one day, you will fill in that activity in your training report, date it, sign it, and so on. If it's an activity that lasts a number of days, perhaps a week, then you will wait until the activity is complete. You will then fill it into your training report and then get it signed. It's important that you keep your, your logbook up to date by entering your activities on an ongoing basis in your training reports and you get them signed on an ongoing basis. It's a problem if you leave it till the very end because you will struggle to get signatures from supervisors after the fact. It's also important that the dates of completion in this column here, it's important that they are in date sequence. You cannot have your dates jumbled up, for example, January, March, February, May, April, and so on. You need to have all your January dates in sequence, all your February dates in sequence, and so on. In this way, I can verify whether you've completed the 24 weeks of training. Very, very important. If you page through the logbook, you'll see the number of training report pages that I've put in. You're probably going to go all the way to a page 36. If you find yourself running out of training report pages, please feel free to make a copy of the last page, bind it into the logbook, and then continue filling the logbook in. Once your training report documents are all filled in, You'll see at the back of the logbook, there are the last two pages that you need to fill in. The first is your summary data sheet. The second is your executive summary. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see that these two pages have been duplicated in the logbook. So you have two summary data sheet pages and you have two executive summary pages. The reason for this is that I need you to fill these two pages in in duplicate. The summary data sheet is really the page that summarizes all the training that you've done in 24 weeks. In actual fact, this is your report card. If you've got an attention to detail, you'll notice that the activities that are listed here on the left hand side of this table are the activities that were listed in your logbook on page 11, this listing here. You are now required to take what you filled in in your training report pages and summarize it into this column per activity. Those of you with neat, clean handwriting will be able to fill in at least two lines of description in each of these spaces provided. You will then write the number of weeks that you spent per activity and you will sign each entry. Now this summary data sheet table does a number of things. It first of all allows us to note what activities you completed. Visually, 
the amount of activities filled into this training, uh, uh, into this table, will allow us to note whether you've satisfied 80% of the requirements. The total number of weeks at the bottom of this table needs to be 24 weeks, so make sure that you add up the number of weeks that you've filled in here and make sure that you get your 24 weeks and then fill in a signature in that space provided. You will then hand this table over to your supervisor or mentor, let them re review it, and if they accept it and agree to it, ask them to sign it and date it. Please remember that you need to fill this table in twice. The last page is the executive summary. The executive summary is where we have the final sign-offs of the logbook. The top section requires you to fill in your details. You'll see that you need to put in your initials and surname, your student number, sign it and date it. You will hand this logbook over to the person responsible for training at your company. It could be a human resources person, it could be the training officer. This person will then review what has been filled into this logbook. But more importantly, they will talk to your supervisors and gauge who have you been as an employee at the company, as a trainee at the company, and overall, do they find you competent or not yet competent? Now, this is a very important part of the logbook signing off because it's important for you to note that you are being evaluated on an ongoing basis throughout the 24 weeks. What you want is at the very end that the company finds you competent as a person. So things like attitude, work ethic, timekeeping are very, very important. I'm, I have no doubt that they will find you competent, but you need to work towards that. Then it's important that the employer writes comments here, the person that's going to sign the logbook off. You'll note that I've written a comment here that it says compulsory. They will then fill in their details, initials and surname, signature, their designation, could be an engineer, could be a human resources manager, whatever they are. Day, date of signature and then very, very important, a company stamp. This page needs to be filled in and signed off in duplicate as I've already described. Now it's very important to note that you fill in this logbook in correctly. If there are any issues, please email me and I can come back to you. It's important that at about week 22 or week 23, you send me an email informing me that the training is coming to an end and that you'd like to request an appointment to return the logbook. At that point, I will email you back and I will also send you a checklist which is there for you to verify that all the entries have been done correctly, that you've got all your signatures, that you've got all your dates and company stamps and so on. I hope this video is of help to you in filling out the logbook. Good luck and enjoy your training. The University of Johannesburg. Rethink. Reinvent.